The blazing star is an ancient Gnostic term for Sirius, and as shown here, is symbolized in Freemasonry by the five-pointed star or pentagram. According to Pike, this symbol in Masonry dates back to the pentalpha of the Greek philosopher Pythagoras. The pentalpha gets its name for the five alphas or Greek letter A's which make up its composition. Typically in Freemasonry, you see the five-pointed star with the nose point down. Now, there are even, there's even a division in Masonry which considers this the evil side of Freemasonry as opposed to the non-evil side. For example, Freemasonic lodges in New York do not use the nose side down uh, star. They turn it around so the nose is pointing up, and they consider that uh, a good variety of Freemasonry. Here is an upright Masonic star, which is another type of the blazing star mentioned earlier. Some believe this representation of Sirius may be the origin of the five pointed stars which adorn the American flag, as well as the stars that adorn the Statue of Freedom on top of the U.S. Capitol. Incredibly, these same five pointed stars were carved by Freemasons into the ceiling of Rosslyn Chapel in Scotland more than 500 years ago. Because Sirius is said to arise in the east, it also became known as the Eastern Star. To the Egyptians, Sirius was identified with the dog god Anubis, which is where the name Dog Star comes from. Anubis was said to have guarded the gates of death and was the protector of mysteries. Meanwhile, the Romans recognized Sirius as Janitor Lathaeus, or the Keeper of Hell. These dark associations may be the reason for the sometimes grim view of Sirius and the five-pointed star that represents it. But Sirius was also associated with the Egyptian goddess Isis. And here, as we connect the dots, a more complete picture begins to emerge. For the Egyptians, the rising of Sirius in the east preceded the annual flooding of the Nile River, which for them was a magical event. It was also the time that the goddess Isis would appear and give birth to Horus, the divine child of the Egyptian trinity. The all-seeing eye is also called the Eye of Horus, and in Freemasonry, Horus symbolizes the Masonic concept of a Christ. This is further represented by the hieroglyph used to denote Sirius. Notice the three symbols, an obelisk, a star, and a half circle. According to Egyptologists, the half circle is used to denote what is called the Benben, or the capstone used atop the pyramids. Throughout all history, it has been said that the capstone to the Great Pyramid of Egypt has been missing which is why the all-seeing eye of Horus floats in its place above the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. According to occult philosophers, the light which illuminates the eye comes not from the sun, but from the dog star Sirius, as is demonstrated by this illustration of the blazing star of masonry, centered by an all-seeing eye. As Robert Balville writes, in many esoteric traditions, the return of the capstone of the Great Pyramid will signal the return of the Great Initiate, which, according to many prophecies, signifies the return of the Christ. Albert Pike describes the Masonic Trinity as expressed through Sirius and the symbols that are seen in most all Masonic halls. Notice this image with the sun on one side and the moon on the other while the all-seeing eye sits in between with light blazing behind it. Pike writes that the sun and moon represent the two grand principles, the male and the female. Both shed their light upon their offspring, the blazing star or Horus.
These philosophies have been known and practiced by secret societies for many centuries. As the evidence will show, designing cities as a reflection of a cult tradition was not a new concept to the founding fathers, among whom the influence of Freemasonry seems undeniable. In fact, the 110th Congress of the United States on January 5th, 2007 passed House Resolution Number 33 to honor the Freemasons for their contribution throughout America's history. The Number 33 is well known as the honorary degree of Scottish Rite Masonry. The House Resolution read in part that the founding fathers of this great nation and signers of the Constitution, most of whom were Freemasons. The Masons felt in the United States that they were forming a Masonic Republic. The concept of a Republic dates back to the Greek philosopher Plato. Plato's uh, Republic, that's a utopian theme and that whole thing runs through our philosophy and thinking among the humanists to this day. They still think they would like to introduce uh, Plato's uh, Republic. Think about it. Every socialist uh, country that has gone socialist have always called themselves a republic for that very reason. It was Plato who likewise set down the earliest known record of ancient Atlantis. Centuries later, Sir Francis Bacon would set down the new Atlantis, a tale which some believe was meant to be a blueprint for the new world, one based upon the teachings of ancient philosophers. Bacon didn't invent this New Atlantis concept. He was merely the inheritor of it. He was probably the most articulate proponent of it ever in history, but uh, it preceded him. Bacon believed that the American continent was in fact the site of ancient Atlantis, a concept held by teachers of esoteric wisdom even today. The New Atlantis really was just America anyway. The east coast of America, if you take a look at the maps uh, by other clairvoyants who have studied Atlantis, indicates that the east coast of America was the west coast of Atlantis. This country, America, is the remnant of the ancient Atlantis. And so is very susceptible to much of the, of the history of Atlantis, the, the energies of Atlantis and some of the, the actions, for instance, the religion of Atlantis. According to esoterics, the religion of Atlantis was in fact the mystery school teachings that were embraced by the ancient philosophers. Yet it might be said that none have been as prolific on this subject as 20th century philosopher Manley P. Hall who wrote such books as The Secret Destiny of America and America's Assignment with Destiny. It was Hall that many Freemasons are said to have called Masonry's greatest philosopher. In 1934, Hall founded the Philosophical Research Society in Los Angeles, California, an organization dedicated to exploring the wisdom of all the world's traditions. It began in 1934, and I think in this building, the library itself was uh, finished in 1936. This is uh, one of the leading wisdom libraries in all of North America, if not, if not the most comprehensive itself. The Philosophical Research Library has been highly regarded by esoteric students from all over the world. It is composed of books and artifacts collected by Manley Hall throughout his lifetime. Among those who revered the library was President Franklin D. Roosevelt, a Freemason and student of esoteric tradition. And Mr. Roosevelt himself, you know, back in 1942, after the Pearl Harbor invasion, sent some of his people here to, to microfish uh, the works of the, in this library because he looked upon it as a national treasure. He wanted to preserve it. When Hall died in 1990, his role as president of the society was succeeded by Dr. Obadiah Harris. Manley Hall, who was a young 
Canadian philosopher, sage type, envisioned um, re-establishing what he called um, the little Alexandrian library, which was, as you know, destroyed. Um, he was very fortunate in that as he was giving a talk, he was still in his, only, in his early 20s, a baroness, oil baroness, from uh, Ventura, who owned most of the oil wells in Ventura County, told him that she was going to take care of him for the rest of his life, that no matter what he needed to let her know, that she would see that he got it. And that she wasn't really joking, because I've looked at the records and back in the uh, early 30s, when most of the country was in depression, I don't know if California was really in one, but most of the world, the country was, that she was giving him 50000 and and $100,000 at a time to go around and search out these, this wisdom literature in manuscript form and in book form. This proves interesting because much of Hall's highly financed research was dedicated to investigating the founding and purpose of America. Through his research, Hall became convinced that America had a secret destiny that was known by the arcane societies of the ancient world. Was it this information that compelled FDR to preserve Hall's literature? Like Hall, FDR also believed that America had a rendezvous with destiny. Hall's connections to the White House and FDR are mysterious, but do not end with the library. Hall was also involved with a mysterious Russian mystic named Nicholas Rorick. Rorick was a Rosicrucian and member of the Theosophical Society. He was said to be a kind of spiritual mentor to Henry Wallace, a 32nd degree Mason who would become FDR's vice president. It was Rorick's influence that inspired Wallace and ultimately FDR to place the great seal of the United States on the back of the dollar bill with the words Novus Ordo Seclorum, the new order of the ages. Dr. Harris, can you tell us about this, uh, this statue here? Oh, well, this, 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 would be a, this would be a very favorite thing to, to Manny Hall. This is Nicholas Rorick. Today, a statuette of Nicholas Rorick can be found at the PRS library. Well, actually, he lived even in, even in the 20th century. Up until what impact could the beliefs of men like Rorick and Manly P. Hall have had on the highest levels of America's government? they jumped a few decades from the New Deal because the, the, the Novus Ordum Seclorum can be translated to the New Deal in English as easily and readily as to the New Order or the New World Order. Um, I truly believe FDR believed that he was creating a New World Order uh, out of the Depression and that he had with him and, and had, you know, encircled himself by people who who would facilitate that dream these visions of, of new world order or new new world the, the world of democracy that's a part of the very soul that that gave birth to this country as the United States was born the design for its capital city would begin under the leadership of President George Washington who was himself a master mason. 150 years later, the fulfillment of its major construction with such buildings as the Jefferson Memorial, the National Archives, and the Pentagon would be completed under the leadership of another Masonic president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. But was the city erected to represent the country's concept of liberty or to reflect an ancient belief in America's destiny? According to Hall, Freemasonry plays a pivotal role in bringing forth this ancient plan. Manly P. Hall was a, was a Freemason, wasn't he? Right, he was a 33rd degree Mason. He was really important as far as trying to figure out uh, what the goals of Freemasonry are in this age. He, he gives you, 
hence.